Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we are back at it again. It's your boys from Aplemore Podcast. We got Matt Walton, Mike Peachy, and Mike Raspass here to talk about the hottest topic in wrestling, Ronda Rousey. Mike and Mike, how are you guys doing today? Well, you know, pretty good, pretty good. How are you? Yeah, yeah excellent. Excellent. I'm excited. I'm excited to talk some Ronda. Because we were there. We were there when she debuted. We were there when it happened. Roundy oh. Rada. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully this is going to be an easy topic because my voice hurts real bad, as you guys can probably tell by the sound quality and over-energeticness of my voice. Uh, just to give everyone a kind of an idea, we are recording the day after St. Patrick's Day. And two days after Austin 316 Day. So, Is that the same day as Rusev Day? Oh man, good joke. <laughs> uh, Mike's trying to tweet at Rusev to try to get a tweet oh, yeah. back. I like it. Yeah, I like try, it. Trying to get Cleveland. Trying to tell him that can't be Joe Thomas Day. It's Rusev Day. Oh man, you're a nerd. So, all right. So Ronda Rousey. So uh, the 2018 Royal Rumble. After all the rumors, well, they were basically confirmed, but all the rumors. Ronda debuted at the end of the pay per view. Point it awkwardly at the WrestleMania sign um, at the end of the night to, my opinion, overshadow the Women's Royal Rumble, but I get what they were going for. Um, And she has a full-time contract with WWE. She plans on being a full-time competitor, no part-time, no jumping back and forth, just like a regular uh, wrestler they have. And is going to be doing stuff. Her first match is uh, at WrestleMania this year. It's a tag team match with uh, her and Kurt Angle versus Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. So um, I'll let my voice rest a couple minutes, and I'll kind of pass it over to you guys and give your thoughts on it. We think it's a good signing, bad signing. What are we excited for? Things like that. And I think this is just going to be a really riff episode amongst the three of us. So uh, rest pass. I'll let you go first, bud. Uh, me? I, yeah. I was going to let Peachy go first. Um, as far as this signing goes, I mean, how can it be a bad one? I, I mean, <laughs> you really, you have somebody, obviously, that's interested in wrestling. Uh, I Hands down. Yeah, I, I, I don't care what anybody one. says as far as, like, it's hard not to compare it to Brock Lesnar, but Lesnar does not have a passion for wrestling. It's a moneymaker to him. It's been since he started. You know, he's not a wrestling fan where Ronda is. Um, Ronda's options were probably a little limited when she came here. So even if she had intentions of going back to UFC, she needs it. She needs it, and it's only going to help her to do it. But you knew over time she was eventually going to end up here. So how it could be a bad one, I mean, it's it's a great signing for WWE. I don't care where she's at in her career. Um her star power is still there. It brings legitimacy, you know, to, to I, fake wrestling. I, yeah. I, I bought a Ronda Rousey t-shirt. Well, they're right there. That, yeah, exactly. that legitimizes it. Exactly. <laughs> In the beginning, I was hoping that they would start her down at NXT and, like, let her get, you know, her ropes. But, I like, just thinking about it, her name's just too big to start her down in the minors. And, like, then she'll bring money to... WWF or WWE right away. Had had she not signed so close to WrestleMania, I think there might have been a shot you would have seen her in NXT. Uh, even even if it was just a, a one off match kind of thing. I mean, they, to be honest with you, they did it with Nakamura. You know, they, they they've done it with people down there, and I realize Rousey has no bad quote unquote fake wrestling habits that they need to knock out of her. She's training with their style in mind. Um, right. But, yeah, uh, but she, I, unfortunately, she's, just, she's she's too big. <laughs> she's too big yeah, for you them can't, to... Uh, yeah, I, with, everybody in the U.S. knows her. Where it's, We've had this argument the last episode about Nakamura, and people here didn't see him. Everybody's seen Rousey. Everybody. Mm-hmm. So you're not introducing the, a new person to anybody. You're just waiting to see, oh, can she wrestle, you know. Uh, right. That, that's what I was hoping NXT for her to develop, you know, a mic personality. But is she just going to use Heyman? Like, yeah, I like, don't. I think she's she's one of those people that she literally does not. She doesn't need to speak on the mic. 
she probably shouldn't speak on the mic. She should get that shitty and grin off her face when she comes out because she's supposed to be a badass. And that's what ruined the rumble thing more than anything was her right. coming she's out with this so big excited. smile on her face. Yeah, yeah I, I, I get that. But if hey, you can't talk, then don't ruin it with your facial expression. <laughs> I like. I really do like the idea of her going into NXT and kind of learning through that way. But exactly that. Her name's too big. It's too. It's too big of a marquee draw for her to start there. It would be great for the NXT product. But here's the other thing I think is going to be great about it too. I think it's really going to show what the performance center is capable of. So, like Pete, you're mentioning the. You know, it'd be great for her to go down into NXT, learn to talk on the mic, learn the ropes like that. She's doing all of that in the performance center, just not on on TV. Um, mm-hmm. It's not exactly similar, but uh, they had Mandy Rose do something similar. So she wasn't on. She wasn't big down in NXT, like especially on the TV, because they didn't want her to get that uh, NXT stigma to where uh, this guy came up from NXT, this girl came up from NXT. So like, oh, they had that. She didn't have that. So like, she just kind of learned in the performance center. She did a couple house shows, things like that, and then. Um, debuted on the main roster kind of bypassing NXT. Ronda Rousey, you're not going to be able to have her do house show matches and things like that just because that drawing power is just way too big for her to just be some random mid-card match um, in Toledo on a WWE live event. Um there's so like we were talking about comparisons like obviously there's the Lesnar comparison especially with uh, the UFC background things like that but there's another comparison I was thinking about today when we kind of started talking about this and I, that comparison is to the Miz and here's here's where I I will kind of have that comparison about he was a fan like so he used his star power in the real world to where he was he had that Miz gimmick on there and he transitioned that into WWE. So, like, he got on their Tough Enough show. He came up that way, like, a very by-the-system guy. Um, but kind of used the little bit of star power he had to get his foot in the door and then just kind of worked his way through, and is now he's top of the game right now. Um, but to me, like, the Ronda signing is a very... It's a mix between Lesnar and Miz. Lesnar, you have that UFC star power, like, oh, this is a real fighter. How is Ronda going to lose? Because she's a real fighter in professional wrestling world but then you also have the Miz who the Miz generally loves professional wrestling he grew up on it he's a fan of it um and he's worked now he's working in the industry and I think it's a very good marry between the two of like Lesnar and Miz kind of put together what do you guys think of that yeah without doubt like that I think the Miz comparison's great like Ronda's definitely got a bigger celebrity to her but you know, no doubt, and, no doubt. And she's bypassing that whole system. Like, you saying Miz came up to toughen up all that stuff. Like, she's definitely going to bypass that just because of her name. But, like, I think I like that better than the Brock thing, but... It's it's I, it's, it's a mix of the two, I think. It's like, yeah, it, yeah. it's not, it's not, it's... If I was, like, kind of nitpicking of, like, okay, where am I seeing this from... I remember. I just remember seeing it in the Miz. Like he came up. He was always a fan, and that's one of the things why I always really liked the Miz. Like I, I just generally liked that story that this kid was a fan. He did an MTV show, and then he, you know, he wanted to be a professional wrestler and all that stuff. And then he went through, follow through, and did it. Yeah, I, it, I honestly <laughs> talking about it a little bit more. You probably could compare it a little bit to Kurt Angle. Where he came in, he got wooed by all... I mean, obviously, Ronda's not getting wooed by anybody else. She wants to be in WWE. But at the time, Kurt had a name to him. Obviously not on the level of Ronda. He had a name to him. Do I think he's as huge of a fan as Ronda? Probably not. But you could tell right away he understood it. He enjoyed it. And, and you don't expect Kurt to go away from professional wrestling. I mean, even now... He's still trying to force himself to wrestle with a broken freaking neck. But um, – You really had to say it. You yes. really had to say it. Uh, but like he had he had some star power to him. Like I, said, I, I almost think you could probably compare a little bit more to Kurt Angle and The Miz because Kurt had to get used to you know, the transition from amateur to professional 
where Brock started professional wrestling. It's almost the opposite of Brock Lesnar in a sense. But Kurt, you could tell, enjoys doing what he does. You know, where Brock, you still don't get that sense he enjoys it. No, he does not. Yeah, because you, you get the sense talk. that he knows it's a paycheck. He, he's doing it purely for, from a job standpoint. Uh, and I honestly, uh, the comparison to, to Kurt, I would love if, if Ronda does anything close to what Kurt Angle does, this is, you probably could argue one of the best signings ever if she could get to that level. I don't see it happening because I don't think she needs to. There, there's a little different, you know, there's a difference where I don't think to get to that level in the women's division, no matter how competitive it is right now, she doesn't need to. She can be Brock. She can come out and scream and beat the hell out of people and have five minute matches and just fucking dominate and and I, I win a title and hold that. on to it for forever. I mean, they could do the same thing they do with Brock. I hope to God <laughs> that she she tries to develop a character and everything, but uh, moves she, list. Yeah, she doesn't need to. Uh, it, it's a shame to say she doesn't need to. Yeah, that that's one of the things that like frustrates me about Brock is they've never forced him to do any of the moves. Like he does a German suplex, and that's about it. Well, Plus. I think I think the whole Lesnar thing. Not to try to break off into that tangent, it worked really well for the character that Lesnar was after he beat. Well, yeah, after he beat like Taker, like he went on that run to where he beat. Uh, it was Punk, then Triple H at Mania. Then I forget what it was. I forget. I forget what the order was. I, I'm. I didn't have this written down. But after the Undertaker match, where he like kind of destroyed Taker, um, he got the title shot at Cena for the title, and just that match was incredible with the German suplexes. Like that was his gimmick, and I think it worked. Of it was a great gimmick for the. I don't know for like a year, but then it just got. Yeah, counting it, it, to thirty for German suplexes. Yeah, it just got it got worn and it's tired and it's I I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm hoping Reigns wins the title. Like I'm hoping like I'll give him the coronation. Like I don't want to see that, but at least the title's off Lesnar and hopefully they they move away from him. They do more super punches. Yeah, whatever. I don't well, see, and, and that's the thing. It, you compare his move set to Cena or Reigns or or Hulk Hogan, and his. I know the suplex is his thing, but look at everything he does now. It's more he's he's limited as opposed to somebody like Reigns. Reigns yeah. does more moves in a match than Brock Lesnar does. Oh, it, yeah. it, it it's it's a shame. It's because Lesnar, in his mind, is I'm going to get healthy. I'm going to make money. I'm going to get healthy. I'm going to go back to UFC. So why why risk anything? He has no reason to risk anything. And they've given him every reason to be like, look, do whatever the hell you want. We don't care. Come in, beat the shit out of everybody, be the beast you are, and uh, and and go home. You do, do whatever you want. You know, he, he has no reason to put effort out there. Where a guy like Cena, it's easier for me to compare it to Cena because Cena's been at it so much longer, but... Um, but yeah, yeah here's drunk. the thing though. Cena cares. Like that's well, like, that's what I was gonna say. You seen like that? Um, what was it? That the stunner off the ropes. Like when he started doing that. Yeah, he added a couple of things, that? and he pulls out big matches yeah. when he asked to. Like hell, him yeah. and like listen. It, a lot of people will say it's because of Styles why the match was so good. But Styles and Cena's whole rivalry. It was his. Their match at the Rumble was incredible. Like, you don't see that type of match. Like, I will never see a match like that at all from Lesnar in any sense. The closest thing you got was the Lesnar-Goldberg match at Mania last year. And it just worked well because they were just beating the shit out of each other for three and a half minutes and the match was done. Right, but, but Lesnar can't sell anything. Like, he, well, you so, need that ragdoll. You need him to be able to so, take bumps and he doesn't even try. Well, that's because he doesn't care. But we can use that to try to tie it back into Ronda Rousey, so we don't go <laughs> as we're going off the rails. <laughs> no, no, um, no. Like I, I was talk, going to talk about Roman, like comparing her to Roman, like trying to push her over the top super early. Well, that's what I'm hoping they don't. But like you were saying, like with Lesnar, doesn't sell all that stuff. But that's like kind of in his character. He is that quote unquote Superman character, maybe. But like I'm hoping we don't get that with Ronda. Like, the one thing I'm hoping with Ronda, and this is going to be very tough for them to handle or to balance is, you know, 
who beats Ronda at some point. So, the like right now, like I think they set up the Mania match perfect. Kurt and Triple H, or Kurt and Ronda versus Triple H and Stephanie, I think is great because you'll have Stephanie and Ronda. They'll get in the ring, and the only thing I'm scared about is, and I noticed this when Lesnar first came back, is like, is Ronda actually going to hurt Stephanie? Like by accident, legitimately, just because of well. The, the concern is, like, she's so... She has um, a habit. Like, she's used to actually punching people in the face for real. Like, she hopefully she knows not to fully go or things like that. Like, I th- would not be surprised if after that match, Stephanie comes out legitimately hurt just uh, by yeah. a freak accident. Uh, Hell, but, uh, Stephanie will sell it, though. Like, Stephanie will keep rolling. She'll well, take yeah, if Ronda actually going. breaks her arm, she's going to sell that because <laughs> Stephanie McMahon's going to have a broken arm. <laughs> Like, that's no, what but, I, I mean, Stephanie's going to keep going with it. Like, she's been in the business long enough and taken, like, big hits and everything and kept going. Like, yeah, but Stephanie I, will carry her. I, I, I'm not, I tend I'm not, to agree with you, Walt, a little bit in the sense that she's been in the business. That's great. But she's not been in the business of taking a match worth of bumps. Even And I doubt they're going to be in the, the ring for very long. And to be honest with you, Triple H is probably going to take a bigger bump than Stephanie will. Probably. From Ronda, but the thing is, this is what, and you know what they're they're planning that match for is Ronda's going to get the pin or a submission. To you're saying Kurt's going to pin Triple H? <laughs> no, I, I think Stephanie's going to interfere. Well, she's in the match. <laughs> There's going to be. Um, hold on, hold on. So, so you're <laughs> saying you think Triple H and Stephanie and Ronda's first match is going to win? win. This. Yeah, just to be the bad guys. <laughs> At WrestleMania, yeah, so, 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 the match on, so, that's rumored to possibly go on last at WrestleMania is going to end with Triple H and Stephanie winning. Yep. Yeah. So, so just just to kind of give the audience a little behind the scenes <laughs> thing, uh, before we started recording, I was like, ah, oh, you know, this will be a nice twenty thirty minutes. You know, it's I didn't think there's going to be thing, anything crazy. Are you just doing this to be a dick? Like, like, <laughs> like, no. <laughs> but I don't see them giving it to her. I was going to say, I, I have a weird feeling he's, he's being Peach, 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 Peach. At WrestleMania 25, Snooki got a win at WrestleMania. <laughs> okay? Snooki mm-hmm. got the pinfall for a pin. And so you're saying Floyd somehow, Mayweather beat Big Show. Brock Lesnar beat Undertaker. Hell, did LT beat Bam Bam? <laughs> I'm pretty I, – hold on. I got to look this one up. Like, all right. Oh, hold on. So I'm going to look this up real fast. Peachy, please explain a little bit your uh, Why would they do read. what you want them to do? <laughs> do they ever do what you want them to do? Yes. Nakamura won the Royal Rumble. Oscar won the Royal Rumble. Yes. They, WrestleMania they normally ends – I'd say normally ends with the good guy winning. Yes. But is Ronda going to be the good guy? I thought she was going to be a badass. Yeah, a bad, a you difference. can be a badass and be a good guy. Yeah, Stone look Cole. at me. Yeah. Look oh, at me. yeah. Yeah. I'm a yeah, badass in general. Badass. Yeah. I'm a good guy. How, how's 31 living with your mom? Oh, fuck <laughs> you. That's the good guy part of them. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Oh, God. I got to find this match now. <laughs> I, I like I, I like I want to continue going, but I, I'm waiting for this because th- we have to stay on this. You can't just, say something like that and have us just move right off it. Yeah, no. So so, okay. So here's the thing. I understand where you're coming from, Peach. Uh, I I get that idea of like, all right, let's just throw him for a swirl swerve. Um, right. Like and, it, and it would be yeah yeah yeah. Lawrence, Lawrence Taylor defeated Bam Bam Bigelow with Ted DiBiase. Yeah, that happens. It just it. This is not the match to do that in. No, <laughs> like gotta... I could see, I could see. I I'm assuming, and Walt, you could disagree me disagree with me if you want. Um, that you assume Nakamura is beating AJ Styles, right? Uh, I don't know. I really don't know. It's and this is and hit. I'm not. This is. And this is why I like it because I don't know who could actually win this match. Like, is do I think St- Nakamura is going to get crowned over Styles at Mania? 
either way, I'm not. Here's the thing. You're, gonna, you're not disappointed. Okay. Would you be disappointed with a double count out? Oh, yeah. That'd be okay. stupid. That would be a swerve, Peach. They yeah. could double count out that match and everybody goes home disappointed. Oh, yeah. And they're not right. going to do it. That fucking Zack Ryder won that ladder match at the WrestleMania we were at. Why? For the fans. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, at the, the, so, WrestleMania yeah, but, is about the fans. And, and yeah, it's like, always and going right, right. to be. And, and they, it, honestly, it's usually good over evil. I, you're going to have matches that aren't going to be that way. But I'm saying, if this match goes last, there's which no I way. Hope not. I it's hope like if if, if Styles and last. Nakamura goes last, and, and and maybe this is more what I meant. Well, if Styles Nakamura goes last, the odds go up a lot that Nakamura is going to win. I disagree with that. I think odds really? go up more. For, yeah, I think because I think Styles is. More of a poster child than Nakamura for but, WWE but and Vince Nakamura McMahon. winning the title isn't a big thing to end it off of. I think both of them are big things to end it off of for that one. Like I think that that's a that's a tricky one. It's a very tricky one. I, I just good. feel like if it goes last, you're almost saying, "Hey, this is going to be the celebration." Nakamura winning the title. I wouldn't so be like upset if, if that if happens. that goes last. Wouldn't Ronda and Ron, uh, Stephanie's match be more likely to be the swerve? If they start the show off with that match, I'd say the odds go from 0% to 0.0009 that Stephanie and Triple H. I think that that match more than any is is guaranteed. Yeah, I can tell you no, right now. I mean, unless no. they're listening to this right now, Peach, and they're like, this guy's got a point. Um... <laughs> I think that is set in stone. It's already written. Ronda wins the match, and, and Ronda wins the match. Not Kurt Angle and Ronda. Ronda yeah. somehow wins this match. Yeah, Ronda's going to be in the ring by herself. Um, the match is going to be a majority, which I'm, I'm actually happy about this. It's going to be Triple H versus Angle, a majority of the match. Because you don't want Stephanie actually wrestling against Ronda. Because, again, like... I'm nervous Ronda's going to hurt Stephanie by accident just because her instinct is going to take over as a fighter and not as a professional wrestler and call and you know just something happens. But yeah, that match is going to end. Like here again, I think the biggest decision for how that match is going to end is it going to be a submission or is it going to be a pinfall? And and I I think I I honestly this match and uh, you can almost already see it. It's going to be a lot of Stephanie stands in there first, walks up to Ronda, turns around, runs, and tags Triple H real quick. Then and then and then at some point Stephanie's going to slap her. Yeah. Um, Triple H knocks Ronda off the ropes and tags in Stephanie. Stephanie acts all big and bad. Ronda runs in. Stephanie tags out. It's going to be yeah. a tease. That whole match of Ronda getting her hands on Stephanie, and it's just going to be a tease, tease, tease. Uh, uh, Match ends with Ronda finally getting it, putting the arm bar. Stephanie taps in two seconds. Match is over. Yep. Yep. If for any reason you have Stephanie look like an actual threat against Ronda Rousey, you just you destroy done. Ronda. You, exactly. That yeah. makes no sense in any sense of the world. Yeah. And, and uh, well, what? She signed a one year deal? I thought it was three. Is it three? Okay. I, I, I wasn't sure. It's a three year deal. Then they have to. I think you brought this up earlier. Well, they have to slow play her. They have to, even though they have her full time, they need to treat her like Lesnar. They need to have her matches be a huge deal. They need to almost treat her like Asuka has been treated in the sense that, Agreed. like, you know, she just she wrestles, beats everybody in her way. And what you need is you need Asuka to beat Charlotte. Hold on to the title, and this has to end with Asuka being the first person to beat Rousey. At what, like SummerSlam? Ne- next year's WrestleMania. I mean, if she signs a uh, three-year deal, this might have to last a year or two. It is. so Because wh- there is one th- match I'm hoping for at Mania next year, and I think they'll be good to put it if you have the belt off of, on Asuka. Um, yeah, I hand, the only thing I get nervous with Asuka is because then I think, who's going to beat Asuka? And I don't want Ronda to beat Asuka, but I also think Ronda is going to be the one to beat Asuka. Yeah, and Ronda's going to kill you. No, no, no. The, 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 I guarantee he'll do them chance. 
No, they won't. They'll, they'll, professional wrestling fans are going to more chant for Asuka than Ronda Rousey, I think. You, right. You'll get the back but and forth. Get the the Ronda's going to kill you. Yeah. Asuka's going to kill you. Ronda. But the only way I want Ronda to win is if she actually develops into a good wrestler a good wrestler and can actually put on a match. Like, I don't... Like, I'm hoping it doesn't just, like, just become a default... She be... I I hope Ronda does not beat um, Asuka at, like, SummerSlam. I hope they don't pull the card on that or pull the trigger on that match um, Too early. this early. Yes, and the, the only way I'm okay with Ronda beating Asuka is if it leads in, to, like, let's say a non-title match. Where she beats her, and then it, it it has to be again closer to WrestleMania of next year at the earliest, where yes. Ronda finds a way to beat Oscar. Who cares if it's a tag team match where Ronda pins Oscar? You know, something yeah. where it's like it's like oh crap, Oscar just lost, yeah, but now Ronda's never lost. You know what I mean? And it's almost like Oscar beats her at WrestleMania or something like that. I'm saying the only way I'm okay with yeah. that if it's one of those. She beat her, but did she really beat her kind of thing? Yeah, I I just hope, like, this is where... And WWE's not going to do it, but you need long-term stories. So, like, the ronda Oscar match, I would say, should happen at WrestleMania 36. Yeah. Um, the, the match I want for next year's Mania, and I'm glad they didn't do it this year, because I think it, again, it adds them to do more for the stories. I want the four horsewomen match. The four-way tag match um, against Bailey, Sasha, Charlotte, and Becky versus uh, the MMA four horsewomen, uh, uh, Blazer, Rousey, uh, Sharfin, and Duke. I really don't know the other um, the MMA horsewomen that well, but just because of that general story, I think it it works really well. I think it'd be a fun match. You have two of the four horsewomen already in WWE. Um. Shawnee Blazers doing decent in NXT. Um, actually, so Peach, like you brought up the whole Ronda should have went in NXT thing. You're getting that with Shawnee Blazer. I can't even pronounce her name. I'm, um, <laughs> it, it again. Yesterday was St. Patty's Day. It was a rough day. <laughs> um, but that's you're you're getting you're seeing what the Ronda story should be via her, which I think is good. Um, but then you get the other two come in for a one-time appearance at Mania, and you build up the four horsemen women versus the four horse women. I think that's just a great story in its own right. If you and especially like if you don't have any of the belts on any of those four women, that's easy. You can have that match. Yeah, I I agree with you. Unfortunately, like you said, it's if they did long-term booking that. In my mind, looks more like a Survivor Series. No. I was thinking SummerSlam, SummerSlam. Like I could see that being a headline. Which, well, I I figure it fits the Survivor Series. You know. Yeah, true. True. The, the, Actually, the that's match a very, set up. So that's a very good point. Um, yeah. And like you said it, it keeps her away from Oscar. That's the thing. If if you're going to eventually have them wrestle at WrestleMania, she's got to stay far away. Oscar's got to beat Charlotte, stay on SmackDown. Yes. They, they have to. They have to almost um, – not, not nearly the same as Owens and Zayn where every time they see it and it's, you know, it's the Peter chicken Griffin fight. and Chicken. Yeah. Um, it, it's more – they just walk past each other, stare each other down. Don't say a word. I mean, Oscar yeah, barely, barely has say. English out of her mouth and she probably still talks better than Ronda does. Just have them walk past each other and stare at each other every time it's, you know, SummerSlam, Survivor Series, Royal Rumble, you know, have uh, have that lead in. Unfortunately, this probably means Ronda wins the Royal Rumble, the second ever women's Royal Rumble. She wins it, and it leads I'd into her Asuka. I'd be fine with that. Well, again, if right, they Are do you that. saying Ronda only is going to fight on pay-per-views? Like, for her first year? I think it's a smart move from them, regardless if they feel she's ready or not, to purely put her in pay-per-views. You know, you have a tag team match. I think her in a singles match should be saved for pay-per-views, at least right now. I agree, because it protects her. It allows her to still train to become a wrestler. Um... And then it again it makes her a gimmick 
like a special attraction type of thing to where you're not getting her every week on Raw. And if you do that for like the you know first year or something, it really builds up that aura around her about her matches and things like that. Um, I want to see her more than Lesnar, so you know not every three pay per views she has a match. Um, uh, no, but I'm, I'm saying like she goes to the pay per views, but then she still gets her her filler in on SmackDown and Raw and shit. Like, oh yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. Just strictly matches on pay-per-views. I don't know if this is what you're saying, Mike, but yeah. Matches on pay-per-views, and she just, um... Yeah, she does promos on Raw and SmackDown. Yeah, or you get, like, a, a random tag team match where, really, she doesn't do much in it or something like that. But yeah, because imagine some of these lower-end pay-per-views. I mean, you have Ronda against Charlotte. That that might main event one of these pay per views. You know, it, you you keep yeah. it in there where it, it's that it, it's it's a lesser version of what they're doing with Lesnar now, but it's the same idea. She's yep. a main attraction in their minds. Don't give it away at Raw. Don't give it away at SmackDown. You uh, don't get you, her hurt. You make them you know pay for the the pay per views that don't exist anymore, but pay for the network. Give us nine ninety nine to go see her wrestle. At fast lane or whatever the hell, I, I think she's are. just as likely to hurt herself as she is to hurt anybody else. Take it oh, off yeah. wrong, take it like, and that that's the thing why you don't have her wrestle every week. You don't have her out there. Yeah, but you need to get reps. Like uh, you can get, you can get. I, I understand can, that, but they also want to get their money out of her. Yeah, yeah, you got to get. She she has to get reps somehow, and like, yeah, I'm saying like a year. That's when you can kind of start putting her kind of on every week as, a, like, an actual wrestler because um, then it gives her an, another full year to learn the WWE style. And then, um, it, it, it that again, that first year, the or is there. Um, but then after that, at some point, I, she has to, if this contract, like she said, like, it, if, if it is a three-year contract and she is, um, she is true to her word that she says she wants to do this full-time, she has to wrestle every week just like everyone else. Yeah, three hundred something appearances a year. I don't and, think she'll do house shows for a while. I think they'll probably. And, uh, nah, they I, they'll, they'll do. I it actually shows. think she's more likely if they're going to go it that way. She's more likely to do house shows. Yeah, true. than to do get, it on Raw or SmackDown. Because so yeah, it's given her to practice. Yeah, without her being on TV, You're like oh, okay, she's showing up, she's showing up, but we have to watch the pay per view. But yeah. then you also. It, it almost helps with house show tickets too. You know, if they're struggling in an area saying, Hey, we're going to Madison square garden for this network special. That's actually a house show rails. He's actually going to wrestle at it. It's the same that literally the same blueprint that they use with Lesnar, just more pay-per-views. Yeah. Cause Lesnar does house shows more than he does raw. Really? I think, yeah. cause I think I've seen like over the last month, he's done like two or three house shows. Um, and I don't think any of them. I don't know if he did Madison Square Garden because they just ran house shows there. I know he was in Chicago and in Minnesota. So, um, but yeah. So the Ronda thing. It seems like it's going to be. It's going to be interesting to see where they go. I'm just assuming they are going to screw it up. Uh, They're not yeah. screwing it up at WrestleMania by having Ronda <laughs> lose. But I still can't believe that. All right. I we, we can bet on this. <laughs> I I wouldn't do that. <laughs> uh, see, Mike's not that confident to bet that. No, if I was you, I wouldn't do that. I will uh, <laughs> give you odds and everything. <laughs> well, you know, maybe this will be our first gimmick for the podcast. Me and Peachy will bet on the Ronda Rousey match for... Let's let's talk. Let's figure out something we can do with a gimmick or a stunt for us <laughs> that the well, loser I, has to do. I, I'm assuming we'll have some type of weird prediction show for WrestleMania, so I can't wait to get back to this because Peach, you have to stick with it now. It's on here. You yeah. can't you can't suddenly change your mind. Oh my god, on <laughs> Raw on Raw Stephanie actually knocked out Ronda. I guess Ronda's gonna win now. You have to hold by this. But no, he could change his mind. Like if he if he decides to change his mind, you know. So I'm assuming Peachy is, you know, watching the product every week. He's on Squared Circle, you know, on all the forums, just you know, just feeling out opinion. I'm assuming you know, texting texting his boy, his boy yeah. Meltzer. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, we'll we'll figure out something fun for that. But yeah, uh, what are your guys' thoughts? Let's uh, you know, let's try to let's wrap this up and get. Well, any... well can, can can we finish this with what started this? Because I was not there for this conversation. Oh no, you weren't. We have oh. not hit this yet. So I I've heard about it, but I haven't heard you argue it over it yet. So. So oh so yeah, uh, Peachy's not a fan of the name that they're using Ronda's full name on her merch. Um, so the Ronda Rousey T-shirt, I think it's a cool T-shirt just because I think it's simple. Um, but it just says uh, Rowdy. It could be Ronda. simpler. It could be. Uh, it just says Rowdy Ronda Rousey in the Piper text, uh, which I think is cool. I'm glad they're letting her do tribute to Roddy, who um, Piper was the reason she got into wrestling and like that i forget the full backstory like if it was her dad or something like that they would watch but so i guess her gimmick is basically rowdy ronda rousey so that's all the shirt really says and i'm like oh this is a great shirt it's ronda rousey of course they're using their full name well peachy disagrees with that it shouldn't have her last name it 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 shouldn't like it if they were doing it for rowdy like they should have just left it rowdy ronda that'd be fine because but they didn't put Piper, they didn't put, like, his last name on there. It was Rodney Rodney. That's what it was. It doesn't need Rousey. Um, like, I know why WWE's doing it, but I don't think it needs it. Well, I... I as much as I want to agree with you, Peach, because it's funnier to tag team against Walton, um, I think you have to put her whole name on it. I don't even think you need the rowdy, the rowdy on it, to be honest with you. I think the, the, the font says that part. But you need to put Ronda Rousey on it. Yeah, plus like, it's you just have it, it's, it's the name that's selling it. If, if, if you never if you never seen wrestling, you didn't even know that, Ra- that Ronda Rousey was in WWE right now, and you see that shirt where it says Rowdy Ronda and that's it, they could be talking about anybody. I mean, honestly, they could be. But you they see could. the full name, and you're like, "Oh, I thought that was Rousey." They were talking about, you know what I mean? Like, I, you you yeah. have to use her name, and her name is her full name. Where Piper's actual name was not Roddy Piper. Right. People didn't know him prior to wrestling to the point they're like, "Oh my god, I need this shirt." Um, I think they're they're doing it more on the aspect of fans outside of WWE than they are inside WWE by putting her full right. name on it. Again, I, as much as I hate to agree with Walton. But <laughs> it, here's the thing, too. I think the shirt would, like, it would... I don't think I would like the shirt as much if it didn't have Ronda, Roddy's, or Rousey's full name on it. Like, just because it's like, okay, like, yeah, it's Ronda See, Rousey. That, and here's the one thing, and I, I don't remember the old shirts, but I actually was going to ask this regardless. Did... Piper's shirt said Hot Rod. Yeah, it was Hot Rod. It wasn't yeah, even Hot his Rod. name. Okay. That was his, well, that was his big shirt. Like, I think he had probably He had a shirts. Rowdy Rodney shirt as well. But, yeah. That's what I – but the one he's known for is the Hot it's Rod. It's the Hot Rod. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, like you said, it's not – his didn't even say Rowdy Roddy on it or anything and, and leave off the Piper. But I would say that there's more shirts that have his full name on it than just – Say Rowdy Roddy. Like I'm sure Piper's in there incorporated in most of his shirts that you see. Uh, it's just I don't know. It would be tough to leave her last name off purely yeah. out of the aspect of if you have no idea what's going on, you see a shirt sitting there online and it says Rousey on it. You right. know who they're talking about. Right. Yeah, it, and, and it, it could be thing. some YouTube star called Rowdy Ronda or something like that. You know what I mean? I think it's more for the people outside than it is inside. Yeah. And here's the thing WWE has been great at doing lately is getting rid of people's names. Adrian Neville, uh, Antonio Cesaro, Elias Sampson. Um, what the hell was Rusev's name before he uh, before he just became Rusev? Was it like Alexander or something like that? Some type of... Yeah, I think that's what it was. Um, but they've been doing that all over the place of like just shortening down to um, uh, like single word names. So, like, with Peachy's statement, I could see them doing that soon, but I don't, like, I'm like, there's there's no way that they're just going to call her Ronda. 
no, no, they'll they'll call it rowdy or something. Like they'll do something where they can have it in their video games and they're like that's officially licensed to them. Like The Rock is a license to WWE and he uses that everywhere. Well, The Rock is pro- that's a whole mutually agreed thing. Just because uh, right, they- right. But I'm saying like if WWE can just call her rowdy, call her something else other than her name they got to get her their money out of her name right now but if they keep her past this three-year contract they could definitely work on they're not going to change her name yeah they're, see, not, I, they're it, not but that's the thing yeah it's it's in the name i mean brock lesnar didn't suddenly become brock you know yeah. even even think about what happened with cm punk i mean it, punk there's owns cer- his name yeah there's certain punk, guys yeah. that, that they don't make some type of deal with her, but to be honest with you, it's in her name. <laughs> her star power is in her name. See, a guy like The Miz was calling himself The Miz. Yeah. If they thought calling him Mike Mizanin was the only way people were going to know him, he'd still be called Mike Mizanin to this day. And that's the thing. Ronda Rousey. It, it, you start calling her other things, and somebody who's never seen the product... That might say, "Oh, look at WrestleMania. This per- it, it doesn't trigger." And, and unfortunately, her she's too big of a star to be like, "Nope." They just gonna- they just did something on, in the uh, two hundred five live. Rockstar Rockstar Spud debuted. Now, obviously, just lower tier guy. Nobody knows who he is. Um, but they call it, his new name is now Drake Maverick. And it's like, okay, like I I know him as Rockstar Spud. But they change his name because they don't, there's no selling power in Rockstar Spud to them, or they don't want people to. When people Google search Rockstar Spud, they're going to see his whole history. They don't want them to see that, so it's Drake Maverick, and then you can dig down that hole. Um, but with Rousey, it's like you do kind of want to see her history because yeah. it then gives you it paints you an image on what to expect when you see her. So like when you like go and just you know see oh who's Ronda Rousey and you Google search her it's gonna come up all for UFC fights oh she's an actual fighter like oh wait I thought wrestling was fake but this is a real fighter so but okay let me let me tune in and watch this <laughs> are you Google Rousey right now please <laughs> no I just googled the name Ronda uh, and that's the first thing that pops up is Ronda Rousey yeah but but a second is like help me Ronda or something like that. No, it's a town <laughs> in Spain. Well, um, everybody knows. I mean, this has been widely known that WWE hates Spain. Yeah. <laughs> was that Brazil or Spain where Jericho got almost got arrested for? There was Brazil, I think. He when he like defamed the flag. Uh, that was pretty funny. Um, so that's 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 a, off the topic. But all right, yep, we are running close to forty five minutes with this episode, <laughs> so. Let's uh, let's do that wrap up again, um, yeah. and just let you guys, um, you know, one thing, you know, what are you most excited about, or what do you want to see with Ronda, or any fi- any other final thoughts? Rest pass. I'll let you go first. Um, uh, as much as I love the signing, and, and and we just talked about everything they should do. It's WWE, and waiting a year to get Oscar Rousey is not as interesting as the next pay-per-view. And, and we're going to get everything quicker, but they have this sitting in their lap, and I hope they take advantage of it because she literally could never learn how to actually wrestle and make them a lot of money and still have people anticipate it. The problem is is she does not look good in the ring. It's going to ruin it. <laughs> I mean, it just is. If she never develops at least a little bit, it's going to ruin it. And as much as they probably don't care because it's going to get non-wrestling fans to still watch regardless, I hope that they just they do it from a smart business standpoint on both ends, I guess is the way. I, I'm, I'm hoping. I'm, I'm wishing and hoping. But obviously... I hope that this eventually is a Rousey Oscar both undefeated. That's where this ends at some point. Um, that's what I'm waiting for, and for Stephanie McMahon to pin Ronda Rousey too is what I'm waiting for too. Um, but other than that, I just I'm I'm hopeful, but it's WWE. Oh. 
Peach, your thoughts? I like I'm I'm excited for the signing. Like I want I I'm really curious on what the character they build for her, what you know, kind of persona they give her, and what her move list is going to be. Like it it needs to be something. She needs to be trainable. She she could be a great face for a long time for WWE. But if they don't develop her, you know, then they just have another overpaid Brock Lesnar. Fair enough, fair enough. So so here's I guess my thoughts. I'm excited for it. I think it I think it has the potential to be great. I think like you were kinda of saying, Russ Pass, like if she never develops and never actually learns how to wrestle, that kind of sucks. Because you do lose, like, that Asuka-Ronda match would be amazing if Ronda knows how to wrestle and can actually make it a competitive match. Um, even if she doesn't learn to wrestle and just becomes, like, a Brock Lesnar-type person, it it hurts a couple things, but I think you still can have some good stories, and that's more of a storytelling side of things and not the actual art of professional wrestling uh, that I'm kind of hoping to see. Um, they have a lot of matches at their hands, I think, that you can set up for this. Um, it definitely opens the eyes a lot more, which I, I hope in turn makes the overall product better. Um, I do think it sucks that she's taken a spot away from actual wrestlers that have done this through their entire life, but it's a marquee name. I think it's going to do overall great. I hope it elevates the women's division even more and makes it actually competitive and like continue the steps that they're moving forward now which um which has been really great so um and yeah i can't wait to see stephanie mcmahon pin i didn't stephanie, say that i didn't stephanie, I just said ronda was gonna lose stephanie I didn't mcmahon say stephanie was gonna pin her. is gonna pull out a canadian destroyer <laughs> on ronda rousey at wrestlemania you heard it here first ladies and gentlemen <laughs> It's, it's it been a whole bait first. and switch. Stephanie's actually been the one training this whole time. Exactly. That's what this is. Stephanie yeah. is going to become the superpower in the women's division. <laughs> oh, man. So, well, that's it for episode number two of Apron Work Podcast. You know, want to thank you guys for listening uh, and hope you enjoyed it. And we will catch you back here again. So catch you guys later.